I will be um, sharing my screen. So I'm in front of me now. I have two uh, laptop. You will still be able to see me, I guess. Okay. All right. All right. So let me start my recording. Yeah, uh, I already start recording. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. So you can start. All right. Thank you. Thank you okay. So everyone can see my slide. Yes, we can see your slide. All right. Thank you. All right. Um. So uh, very good after. Uh, good after. Good morning. Sorry, I'm I'm a bit blur at the moment. Um. Very good morning. Uh. To all of you here. Uh. Welcome. Welcome to the session of research output, engagement, and impact. So, for the first timers who join uh, this session, um, I'm Bong. You can just call me Bong. I, I it's okay. Don't no need to call me doctor. It's okay. So, um, I'm an industry liaison or research manager at the UM of uh, UM Office of Industry and uh, Community Engagement (UMIs). So, have you heard of UMIs? By the way, just trying to get uh, you know. Um, okay, this session, uh, don't have to feel very serious or uh, very stressful about the session. I'll try to make it light and easy so that by the end of um, today and tomorrow, at least you will learn something that will be applicable to um, your research and also to uh, whatever you are doing, okay, engagement or even like uh, outreach and so forth. Okay, so... Before I, uh, before we proceed, um, if you look at the Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, okay, hold on. Let me unshare the session. Okay, I have been um, share. I've already shared with all of you. If you go to um, this uh, project here, in the folder, so you should be able to see. Um, wait, let me see. Where is my assignment? Sorry. Okay, hold on. Trying to find my assignment here. Mm, aha. Um, uh, all right, this is not the one. This is not the one. Give me a second. Yeah, here. Okay. So, um, if you go to this, uh, Paul, uh, yeah. Are you sharing your screen or something? Oh, sorry. I'm. Uh, uh, we okay. can't see your screen yet. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, yeah. Uh, I forgot that I unshare my screen. Okay. So basically, I guess uh, all of you are quite familiar now by now um, uh, with Microsoft Team. So please go to um, the main page. Okay. Suddenly, I can't find my uh, main page. Uh, Dr. Bong, can you just click the Teams? Yeah, Teams. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teams. Uh, the, the third yeah. icon. The third icon? Below chat. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, Teams. All right, all right. Aha, yeah, all right. here. All right. Thanks, Umu. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, in files, you can see this class material. And in the class material, I have already shared uh, some of uh, the material for these two days with all of you. So now uh, for the first one, um, pre-post test. So what I would like you to do uh, is, um, can you click on this button and download it? Because um, all of you will have a separate sheet with your name and so forth. The reason why we have a pre-post test is to test, uh, actually not to test, to check uh, whether you have gained anything from this uh, six hours training, yeah? Okay, so please download. And after that, um, we will have the test. Okay, 10 minutes. Everyone okay? Yes. Yes, sir. all right. Anyone has uh, any trouble uh, in... Uh, Searching for the files, the materials, the course, uh, the, the course materials. Yeah, we already found it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Okay, I will just give you uh, 10 minutes. The clock is ticking. All right. While answering, if you have any question or anything you would like to ask or you are not sure of, um, you can just ask me. Another nine nine minutes. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, Doctor Aga. I I have just see your uh, question. Um, uh, yes. You please uh, answer in the pre column. So in that um the document you have a pre column and a post column. So what I would like you to do for this morning is actually to answer in the pre column only. Okay. Okay. All good? All right, let me see. Five more minutes. It's just uh, 10 simple questions. Um, don't worry, you don't have to go and search or um, you know, Google about it. It's just, um, a, it's just a pretest to see what's the level of your understanding of uh, the topic. Okay. Okay, two more minutes. Everyone okay? Yeah, I'll be I'll keep on talking because I can uh, I can't see all of you here. Some of you switch on the video, some uh yeah. Dr. Bob? Yeah. Dr. Bong, this is Irene from Citra here. Hi, and Irene. I that, yeah, hi. Um, I found that questions from six onwards actually the the okay, from the yeah. six onwards. Um, yes. The blanks that you prepared for us actually cannot be filled out because it's in image form. <laughs> the pre oh, and okay. post. So what should we do with this? Should I just put down, just hide, just ball it and put down pre? Um, or uh, you can just put any indicator. Sorry about that because ah, okay. um, pre previously I prepared in um, you know print it out. So uh, because from six to eleven is uh, six to ten. Sorry, is actually a true false question, right? All you and need to do is uh, multiple. Um, multiple or true false? It's MCQ questions. Oh, MCQ. Mm. Um, right. So uh, put down pre and then write down the answer B A like that. Huh? Yes. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, you can highlight. I uh, can just highlight the uh, answer. Okay. All right. Uh, the mm done. The aga done. Okay, let me see.
Okay, one more minute. Last one, last minute. Everyone okay? Counting down. Yes. Anyone, anyone has any question? Yes, Chanti. Hi, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, late. <laughs> ah, it's okay, it's okay. Actually, I'm on leave. La. <laughs> but ah. I, don't mind. I want to join us. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so today is actually a three hours, uh, just the morning. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. we will continue for tomorrow. Ah, so, yeah. um, Chanti, um, like just now I shared with uh, others, um, please go to the course material in this uh, Microsoft Teams. And uh, we are actually doing the pre-post test. Uh, it's just uh, 10 questions. So if you can, can just uh, fill up very quickly, uh, 10 minutes it will do. Um, because uh, the others have already done, so I have to continue, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Carry on, carry on. Thank all you. right, all right. Okay, okay. so, right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, this piece of um, the pre-test, uh, please keep it first, um, because tomorrow we'll be using the same sheet and answer the post test. I won't be sharing with you what's the answer. Okay, so uh, after tomorrow, we will have a comparison of even like uh, during the course, you will know the answer already. Okay, so all right, um, yeah, the, the law. Uh, where's the course material? It's actually at um, hold on, yeah, it's in this Microsoft Teams. Okay, hold on, I will just uh, if you can see my screen now, right on your left side, the Teams here, so go to files. And all the class materials is in this folder. So this uh, folder contains of four um, documents, and this document, um, some of it are references, and others will be um, the materials that we will be using for your uh, hands-on activity throughout these two days. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Lau. All right. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Welcome. Um. Yeah. I will go back to my slide. Okay, so an introduction about the course synopsis. Uh, since uh, earlier on when I asked around, some of you are uh, first time joining me here. Okay, so um, what is this course, all, uh, what is it all about? So outreach and engagement occupy the ends of the spe uh, spectrum uh, as a form of uh, public particip participation. And interacting with public is a worthwhile uh, endeavor, but the participation in science communication or science outreach remains uh, fairly low. And the transition of um, the research into useful application, all of you are researchers here, right? And you have done all the research in the lab or even like doing, um, you know, like um, computer software and so forth throughout your projects, throughout uh, either you are studying a master or PhD degrees or even you are now a lecturer, a researcher, where, whereby the KPI of research is how many percent? Uh, 40, 50, 40, 50, right? I, I can't remember. The new KPI system, and I'm sure all of you are aware of that. So transitioning the research into useful application is often ch uh, challenging as it requires an understanding of the stakeholder needs, a well design of uh, scientific research. For this part, the well design, um, that one, I will leave it to all of you because I believe that you are expert in your own area after going through the hassle of, um, um, you know, like going through your PhD and so forth. And um, it also requires collaborative uh, partnership, effective communication, outreach uh, strategies and resources for the transition. But it's the end for today is we like to, uh, from identifying stakeholders, who are your stakeholders, what, is, uh, what it means by stakeholders, to designing your engagement. And I hope that you will learn uh, to how to best engage with stakeholders in order to achieve uh, this goal, yeah? Okay. All right. So um, before I start, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Bong. I'm the industry liaison from UM Office of Industry and Community Engagement, UMI. So what is our um, what is our office function, where we are? We are actually situated at level three of uh, research management and uh, 
I triple P building, uh, research management, uh, no wait, uh, RMIC, uh, research management innovation complex, okay, RMIC, or um, so called the I triple P building. So we are at level three. And once you enter the main door, you will see um, our signboard here, UMIs. Okay, so who we are? We are actually a single stop center for potential industry and community partners and also stakeholders to connect and explore engagement opportunities um, across UM campus. Um, to simplify this, uh, our role is actually to help to bridge the gap between UM, academia, and also with uh, external stakeholders, which is um, the industry, the community, the NGOs, the foundation, the association, and so forth. So usually, sometimes, um, external parties, when they feel like they want to explore potential collaboration, they will come to our office. And what we do, uh, we actually uh, plan, drive, and uh, monitor the industry and community engagement activities uh, for UM as a whole. So um, by end of the year, our office will prepare a report uh, to be presented to um, the vice chancellor, to the deputy vice chancellor. Okay, so all these are uh, the function. We build, implement, and enhance uh, strategic uh, partnerships. Then we coordinate, promote, and enhance the visibility. Okay. Hmm, something wrong. All right. So, like what I mentioned earlier, what we do, um, basically our tagline for UMI is to connect, to engage, and to partner. So, first of all, we, um, when we connect, right, we help to establish a professional and integral connection between the external parties and the relevant officers or the researchers within the university or vice versa. So yeah, the target, um, to plan and uh, to engage with NGO in uh, your activities. Um, okay, if let's say, for example, if you have the contact, right, and you would like to know what is the processes, yes, please uh, come to us. Uh, we will assist you with the processes. And sometimes um, I would like to um, tell you very frankly, Although we do have like industry coming on board, but if let's say if you're asking for a specific company uh, to assist your research, I might not be able to provide that. Yeah, Our office might not be able to pro provide that. We are actually building up um, the database uh, at the moment. Um, but um, because when the companies or the industry or even like the community, when they come to our office, they have a very specific uh, um, proposal. Say, for example, they would like to engage with certain uh, areas or uh, certain expertise, for example. So, um, like uh, what Dr. Aga mentioned, uh, we don't have a list of NGO uh, for you to choose from. But if, let's say, you have identified um, your potential NGO and you would like us to, do, uh, to help to coordinate and um, guide you with the processes so that you won't miss out, you, you know, like all your uh, agreements and also your documents, um, the legal uh, documents are all smoothly run and being recorded properly. And that to ensure that um, you all this engagement is being captured and counted as the KPI. That is the most important thing. Okay? All right. Okay, Dr. Aga, after this, uh, you have my contact number, you have my email uh, um, address. Uh, so just drop me an, um, an email. Or even you can go to uh, UMI. Uh, we have a website, umis.um.edu.my. Okay, in that website, you will see all these things. Okay, next, I proceed to engage. So during the engagement, right, what we do is uh, we facilitate um, initial discussion and also communication between UM and also the external parties. And finally, what we want is uh, the partnership. So we develop strategic partnership that is mutually beneficial for all the parties involved. Okay, where we are, where our office is. Um, looking at this organization chart, um, this is a portfolio for Deputy Vice Chancellor of in the, uh, Research and Innovation, uh, Prof. Nosada's office. Okay, if you can, all right, um, yeah, I can see my cursor here. So, um, this is uh, the DVC of uh, Research and, um, hey, hold on. I think something wrong. Sorry, sorry. I didn't re realize my mistake here. So, this is actually uh, Research and Innovation. Oh, this is a huge mistake. Very sorry about this. Because sometimes, um, you know, like cut and paste and so forth, I didn't uh, realize the mistake I made. Okay, so moving on. So 
very sorry. Uh, I apologize uh, for this uh, green bar here, the green tag. It's supposed to be uh, this DP, uh, DVC of Research and Innovation. Okay, so under the Research and Innovation DVC, we have uh, the Center of Excellence. We have the uh, um, all these um, UMCOE, the high COE, okay, and the potential COE. And then we have uh, under AVC of um, Research and Innovation, uh, Prof. Uh, Shaliza. There is IPPP Research Cluster, PPGP, uh, PPP, and DICC. And finally, um, under AVC of Industry and Communi uh, Community Networks, uh, so UMIs, it, we are actually housed here. Um, and I report directly to Prof. Uh, Rafina Yasmin, our current AVC for Industry and Community Networks. So under us, we have the UMCIC, UPUM, and UMCARES. So basically, all these units, uh, which is externally uh, engaging with external stakeholders, it all comes under us, yeah? Okay, so enough of um, introduction and also like, um, um, basically what I want to do is I, I actually to um, introduce you to um, our office, UMIs, because I realized that a lot of, uh, a lot of you it, um, is not very familiar with uh, our office um, since physically, right? Our office is um, only established in 2019, but the position of uh, Associate Vice Chancellor for, Innovate, um, for Industry and Community Networks um, has already been there uh, since 2016, 2017. Okay, so back to where um, our main topic, the research life cycle. Okay, um, so today's topic, because we are talking about research output, engagement, and impact. So research is a very important component uh, in today's training. Okay, so what is research life cycle all about? Research life cycle, in, um, in a simple way, okay, you start something, you have an ideation. So you spark off an idea, you want to do research, okay? And you form your team, you do a collaboration, okay? You form your research team. Then after that, carry out your higher um, research assistant and so forth. Carry out your primary research. It can be like field work or data collection or anything that is relevant to your own, um, your own field. And after the primary research, what you have done is you will start writing, start publication. Okay, You do um, papers, you publish papers in journals and so forth. Okay. And um, after this publication, which is actually from this part onwards, I would say that a lot of, um, but I do see a very good um, response from UM community uh, lately. So um, usually after this, um, the publication, what you do with your paper being published? Okay, can I have like uh, some, um, some response from your side, from all of you? What do you do after your paper has been accepted or published? Anyone? Any volunteer? Hello, any volunteer? Sorry, can you repeat that? No. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, my question is, um, imagine you have your paper being accepted by a journal and the paper was published. So after the paper was published, what do you do next with the paper? Or you continue back to your research and do some more uh, experiments and so forth um, to come up with another paper? So who said? Uh, for me personally, I would um, update my research kit uh, mm -hmm. doing publication. All right, all right. So and yeah, uh, I, I see the response. Thanks, uh, Hussein. I also see the response from Dr. Shadril, uh, update in UM Expert, Dr. Idris, uh, share in uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah, good. Dr. Aga, share in research gap. So, which means that um, some of you here, or um, I hope everyone, then my, my uh, work today will be very easy. So yes, that will be fall under uh, all of you, what, what you have done, sharing, update in UM Expert, sharing LinkedIn, uh, research get and so forth, is actually the dissemination. This is the part. But what after, after you have uploaded, what's next? Do you put there and then wait for it? But I got no social media, yeah? Okay, so what's next? After you have do all those uh, uploading and dissemination, 
Have you ever uh, do for these two from your research, from the publication, the outreach, the engagement, or even impact? So what is this outreach means here? Um, say, for example, if you have a publication, you have this paper, then you have this paper here, and after you have published it in journal, so the outreach and engagement is with this same paper, perhaps you can have like a layman way of writing uh, to the newspaper, being interviewed by radio station about the area. So that is where you try to engage what you have found or your findings, the research findings to the public. Okay, how many of you have done this part? The outreach and engagement? How many of you have done? No? Or not yet? Never? Why? <laughs> oh, no? Okay. All right. So, yeah, this is where um, you see uh, for today, right? This is the. No, no, no. Okay. Why I didn't see any yes? Anyone have done anything? But it's okay, no worries. Uh, that's why uh, you are here today. You are here for two days for the engagement and uh, uh, research, research output engagement and impact training. So um, I put a tagline in the topic, our topic for uh, this two days training. What is the tagline? Is to get the words out. Okay, so that is where um, this outreach, engagement, and impacts come in. So um, this figure here is actually the basically is also a research life cycle, but I try to put it in a, another way of like um, you know explaining the planning. What is the planning part? Uh, Dr. Irene, do not know that we can do it that way. Ah, yeah, I will I will share with you how we can do it and how that uh, how we can actually capture the uh, engagement and impact. How it will help to build your. Um, I would say your career as a researcher, okay, to climb up the ladder. So all of you here, um, because this is the MRO training, so I believe all of you are still uh, considered young researchers, early career faculties, uh, the ECF, okay. So which means that you are at like uh, maybe ten years or less than ten years of your research career. Yeah, you are just starting uh, to go out there in the research on um, struggling to climb up this uh, career path. Okay, uh, but for myself, because I switch um, all my career from academician to non-academician, so what my role is, uh, I will be assisting all the researchers in the university to help you to go through the, um, you know, the, 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 go up the career ladder. I hope I can assist that. Okay. So, um, all right, so this research life cycle, I like what, it's actually the same thing. If you look at like from the planning, it's actually inspiration. Okay, you identify the grants and funding and then con collect and manage the, your primary uh, preliminary access and so forth. Then implementation is where you carry out um, the research, you do analysis and, um, you know, like do publications or publishing. And then after that is the impact, okay? And okay, preservation, uh, preserve, uh, sorry, preservation is actually um, repository. So that is where your repository is where you mentioned just now, you uploaded in UM Expert and so forth. And um, a lot of us didn't realize that the research life cycle is actually a complete cycle. So once you reach this impact, um, it will somehow here, you will have uh, reuse or it will somehow generate a new idea. Okay, what, what it happens, okay, so to put it simpler in this way, imagine you are, you are doing your current research right now and you have already um, do all the data collection and so forth, you publish the data, okay, say for example, we use um, one of the current issue, okay, say for example, I'm not sure whether any one of you is involved in the research of uh, COVID, but I'm just using this as an example so that we, we can imagine how it goes in the research life cycle. So if you are involved in the uh, COVID research, you have collected data. So it happens like since last year and you publish it in uh, maybe Lancet or maybe, I don't know, maybe one of the uh, British medical journal or anything. And because of this COVID, right, um, 
then uh, what happens is, okay, you already have done the dissemination and so forth. And then perhaps because the topic is very new, you are being invited uh, to um, as an expert to explain to the public um, what what this whole uh, COVID is all about and um, how the public can prevent, um, you know, like what, what is the prevention uh, method that they can use. But from, from there, right, when you start engaging, most of us didn't realize that we are actually also getting new ideas. You know, when you are engaging, perhaps um, maybe you will be asked um, like during the interview, one of the questions that you have not thought of. Okay, you have not thought of, and this sparks a new idea to you to continue the research. Okay, bring it back to the lab. That is where you see, go back to inspiration, and it completes in a life cycle. All right. Okay. So, like what I mentioned just now, um, I believe all of you are, are early career uh, researchers. You are in like less than ten years. So, what is most important for all of you here? Okay, of course. Publication is very important. Research is your KPI besides teaching, all right? Publication and sourcing for funding for research is also very important. Once you don't have money, how are you going to uh, con uh, conduct the research and so forth, right? And the other thing a lot of us didn't realize is actually networking. So um, this is where you start building, like you try to find um, seniors or, you know, like your mentor uh, in the university or even like outside of the university. Um, uh, in your field so that you will have like start early to um, get in your, how, how should I put it, building your network, uh, building your team and so forth. So these trees are very important. And uh, we all realize that research papers, the publication, um, it is uh, publishing is very important, right? But 50% of research publication are never read, okay? That is where even though if like say for example, a lot of um, if you didn't put in uh, research get or LinkedIn and so forth, it will be, be even worse. So imagine 50% are never read and 90% um, of those publication is not even cited. And how are you going to build your hash index from the citation if the paper is not being um, read or even cited, right? So that's the reality. Okay. Now mm, we have a fun game. So if you if it's okay, um, just go to uh, slido.com. You can use your handphone. You can use your uh, computer. You can just uh, open in a tab. Go to slido. Enter this uh, event code six two nine seven three. The number. Okay, I have a question for you. Why we need to increase our research uh, visibility and impact? Okay. So I will show you the real time, real time of um, this slide. Yep. Yeah. I think I have already activated it. Oh, sorry. Oh God, where is it? Okay. Now, so this is the real time. Yeah, I can I can check on everyone whether you are with me or you are not there. All right. Why increase the research visibility and impact? Why? What? What? What is the thing that you can think of? You can just type and pause. And it will automatically appear here. To use evidence-based uh, knowledge. Mm, great. All right, we have one response. There's no limit here. You can have like one sentence, one full sentence, a word, two words. Okay, uh, Dr. Idris, uh, is it possible to put it in the slido? To make it useful to the community? So that everyone can see the real time here. Okay, right, to make real research known to others. Okay.
Right, good. Get it going? Okay, what do we have here? Evidence-based knowledge mm -hmm. to make the research known. Then uh, increase awareness of uh, research areas, impact to society, more visibility, assist in uh, future funding. Yeah, why not? Okay, more grants uh, in the future. Expose your research. Draw interest of uh, collaborators, future collaboration. Yeah, any more? Share knowledge. Yes, definitely. What else? Hmm. Being useful, yeah? So benefit the relevant stakeholders, yes? What else? What else can you think of? Because before I close the polls and uh, yeah, maybe we can get like another one or two response. How many do we have here? Okay, let me see. We have quite a number here. In, we have like 20, 24, 23, 24 of you here. Hey, come on, not even half. Where's everybody? Explore opportunities in the, okay. Attract relevant industry, yes. Okay, to make it useful, yeah. Okay, any more that uh, if you have seen like maybe some of your um, colleagues or friends have not posted here that you would like to try okay, before we close the poll? Any more? As a self-motivation, hey, this is very nice. Yes, why not? But I see if there is like uh, improved chances of commercialization, convey uh, relevant and up-to-date information. Yep, yep. Okay, so, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, we will close the poll now. Mm, yep. Okay, I will stop. So you see, um, this is all Okay, let me see if okay yeah so this is all your answers all right all your answers here and yeah we have um all together 11 votes okay let's go back to our slide i think you have got uh, most of the thing hold on i have some issues here give me a second i try to share full slide Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your participation. Uh, thank you for your active engagement. This is a, one of the engagement, right? Okay, so why? Reputation. I think one of you just now mentioned uh, self-motivation, right? Okay, reputation. Make sure people know about your research and use it and take control of your research, okay? okay build a reputation of yourself so that you will have more chance to be promoted because it will be part of your KPI. Uh, once, okay. Why I would say uh, build reputation for, uh, for yourself. Imagine, right, if um, you are more visible and your research is actually doing an impact. People around there, I mean, like the out, uh, public, I mean, uh, people outside from um, your peers know about you, know that uh, you are expert in this area. So you have already started building, because of your uh, visibility, you will start building impact to the community. Okay, so this is actually a reputation of yourself, right? Recognition. Get higher promotion. Uh, of course, now all of you here are already being hired. So promotion, 
get more funding yes uh, some of you have already answered this uh, earlier on like uh, to attract more funding collaboration okay so what i have here is just some of the keywords but of course all of you have done a very good job give a clap to yourself or give a pat on your shoulder or anything yeah um so it's like very still very early on a monday morning but you are very enthusiastic uh, in um in uh, the training itself so yes uh, very good okay okay i will continue um besides that uh the visibility right thank you Dr. Aga. okay so besides uh, the visibility and uh, impact, right? Why? Uh, one of the, the other things is also because of university ranking. So this is um, the UM ranking currently. Um, the world QS world ranking, we are number 59. Yeah, all of you here have worked very hard to ensure that we climb up the, um, the world um, recognition for universities. We are number 59 now. And then of course, Asia ranking is 13 and TAC Asia and also um, UI uh, green metrics. Okay. And also, um, if you notice, I'm not sure whether you have noticed or not, there is actually an impact ranking coming up. Like, um, actually, this was uh, just a few years back. So we have like 2019 and 2020. If you see 2019, right, uh, UM rank in this uh, category 100 to 200. But in 2020, because uh, we realized that how important the impact ranking is, um, yeah, we have already achieved like um, the rank, uh, the you know, like the position of number 80. 2021, um, the ranking now, the um, result is not out yet. But uh, what I understand is my colleagues uh, from PPSG has been starting to collect data because like our offices, we also support the data. Okay, so what is this Im impact ranking all about? It's of course, uh, we'll in, um, count, take into consideration of the SDG indicators, yeah? So, okay, why I'm showing you all this impact ranking and the uh, ranking is because of, back to our question, why, why visibility? Why increase visibility and impact? Okay, so if we look into the methodology of global university ranking, if you look at like, um, you see my cursor? Okay, here. This is a THE ranking. So THE ranking, there are four, five, five category, teaching, Teaching and learning is uh, 30%. Then the research is also very important. So under research, right, there's a reputation survey. So this is where it will come in. What it means here, the reputation survey, uh, what they, they usually do is they will send to employers out there so to, to rank, to rank uh, the university. What is the reputation of the university? Now you see why it is very important for the visibility, right? And then uh, research income and uh, productivity. And uh, the other thing is the citation. So um, later on, you also, I think uh, most of you realize that um, when you are visible, when your, your work is visible, your paper will get citation. You, your paper will get cited. People will cite you, okay? So the citation is also very important. Uh, and then international outlook, industry income, and so forth. So that's the PhD um, ranking. And similarly for QS, you will see the employer reputation also there. The citation is also there and yeah, academic reputation. So basically in summary, right, most of the ranking or actually all of the rankings, they look into um, reputation, they look into the citation impact. Okay, even worse is that um, just now when I show you the THE uh, impact ranking, that will look into solely the impact. Okay, so now I need to give myself a short break after talking like almost half an hour, more than half an hour. So I'll start talking. I guess this is like one of the, maybe some of you will also like agree with me um, doing online uh, training and class. So I try to make um, the session lively. Okay, so all of you are, um, I believe that you are not very young and uh, not, okay, sorry, sorry to put that. You are, you will have some projects in mind, okay? You have some projects or even ongoing projects. Correct, correct, correct. Can I have like a raised hand if you agree with me? A motion of um, raising hand? Yes, yes. Okay, who said? Yep. How about others? 
All right, yes, uh, Dr. Aga. Okay, you all have your project, right? All right, Dr. Shazriel, okay, you also have your project. Now, what I want you to do is um, in a PowerPoint or even in a piece of paper, just an A4 paper, okay, one A4 paper. So you prepare your research project summary in one diagram, which means that whatever you can draw on the paper, okay, it's all about your research. If, say, for example, uh, you are involved in um, a biomass research, okay, you can draw some palm tree, the trunks, and so forth. And how are you going to do the research? Or maybe you are, in, um, you are getting some market survey for the use of biomass and what's the utilization of uh, biomass uh, in the country. And you want to do some comparison and what's the characteristic. You can draw some machine there, you know, like doing uh, the combustion system and so forth. Okay, everyone clear with what, what this activity is all about? Of course, there is some, some um, all these activities, right, bearing in mind, because it's like a six hours training. So um, the six, throughout these six hours, um, whatever that I, I give it to you, the assignment and so forth, is actually helping you to build. Okay, let me see. I think I have one check. Oh, okay, Dr. Shahazri. Um, all right, all right. Okay, I'll see you later as well. Is it like a graphical abstract? Yes, it is. One patch graphical abstract. Okay. Um, I'll give like 30 minutes. So all of you clear? Any question? If you want to ask, you can unmute yourself as well. Okay, no, okay. Um, yeah, let me see. All right, clear. Okay, so I'll give you like, um, maybe not uh, 30 minutes, maybe like 20 minutes. So um, I'll come in like 10, 15, 10, 20, so that you prepare your research project summary, the abstract, the graphical abstract. Okay, one patch is enough. Okay, you try to put in as much as possible so that um, what I will want you to do, I will pick one or two of you from here, from the list that I have. Yeah, I'll just pick and maybe let you share screen. Okay? Is that okay or no objection, right? Everyone okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, Irene. Okay, so um, I'll come back. Um, meanwhile, you, I'll just um, leave my video on. So uh, we will do this activity on the summary, the abstract summary. All right. All right. Um, so uh, any problem that you face uh, while preparing your one patch um, abstract diagram? Anything you would like to ask or any problem? Um, the day increase. How's your progress so far? All right, done. Okay, good. You are very uh, um, because I expected like around twenty minutes, but it's okay since you are done. Maybe the day uh, I will unshare. If you can um share with us, I will learn from each other. Is it possible? Can you share your screen? Okay, you are using desktop, but you can you can share your screen. Is it? Should be all right, right? Um, possible to share screen? Okay, right. Good. Um, so, Dr. Idris, I guess uh, you don't have any um, speaker with you at the moment. Is that correct? So, okay. Um, yeah, we can see clearly, but uh, is, is it possible to enlarge it? To enlarge your... Um, the diagram. Because some of the words I think it's quite small. Even though it's clear, I think I can just see. Ah, okay, right. Okay, that's good. All right, thank you, Dr. Idris. Um, so, okay, how should we do this? Never mind. If you, you can just type it there, you can type in the chat. I see from the list that you're coming from Senar, 
and you are in, directly involved in most of the lab's uh, projects. Okay, research fellow in Sena, right? Okay. Hmm. Okay, so would you like to explain like a very brief explanation? What I can see here, okay, yes, natural products, then you do some extraction. And then I'm not sure, maybe because uh, it would be best if you can uh, use your own words. Do you like to just type, type some of like a very brief, um, maybe in point form is also okay. While well, waiting for Dr. Idris um, to, to explain. Okay. Right. So Dr. Idris and his team is trying to incorporate natural products in cosmetic and neutrocytics. Um, yeah, all right, neutrocytics. So okay, so I believe that you are using the extraction with a uh, deep eutectic solvent and so forth, right? To do. And what is that delivery system? So this is uh this is the thing that you you will have um you know like possible um questions that you might get from um a person who is not in the field with you. So what is our aim uh, throughout these uh, two days uh, or the six hours session is that you are able to explain your research to a non um, a non expert in the field, not your peer. Okay, so you are also trying to, you are also exploring the use of NETS and the delivery system, okay. Although I don't know what, what that, uh, the NETS is about. Okay. And um, so the end here, inflammatory disease, this is what your aim is to cure those disease, right? Okay. So most chronic diseases are related to inflammation and yeah, okay. All right, so um, maybe some of the um, disadvantage when you're using a desktop, if you are able to have like a microphone with you, I'm, I believe you can expand further and uh, we'll be very clear with you. But um, for, for, from the diagram itself, um, I'm not sure from the, for the others, but for my side, I think it's quite okay. How about others? Is the diagram clear enough? I mean, not um, from... Yeah, the diagram, okay. Clear enough, right, the diagram? Um, all right, the diagram, how about yourself? How's your um, diagram? Nice figure, yes, I do uh, agree with that. Nice figure. So you see, um, for the reason why we want you to be more, um, you know, like creative and visual, um, in a visual way, is because when we figures, right, pictures explain better than a thousand words, right? So okay, Dr. Aga, how's your progress going? You have like mic with you. Okay, Dr. Idris, thank you. Uh, maybe you can unshare your screen. And we will pick one more, one more um, friends from the list. And I have a, a volunteer. I might want to see some something from social sciences, though. Hmm, let me see. Um, Doctor Irene, Doctor Irene is not around, right? The diary is not here. Let me see. Well, I go through the list. Anyone wants to volunteer? Any volunteer? Okay. 
So from my list here, I don't see many. How about Little No? From Sport Center. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, can you share your script? All right. Can you see my uh, screen? Yep. Um, okay, um, I'm actually interested in uh, religion and sports performance. Okay. Um, so, uh, I think in two, uh, 2018, mm -hmm. I want to know how much uh, research uh, has been done uh, in religion and, uh, uh, religion and sports uh, in sports psychology, so I did mm -hmm. a suspect review, mm -hmm. and then I found like 56 uh, uh, articles they published and talking about their religion and sports performance. And I mm -hmm. realized that uh, there is no model to explain the relationship between religion and sports performance, so I already uh, created a model, mm -hmm. and then I also realized that most of research in this area uh, had been uh, conducted by qualitative research. So mm. actually, um, there are several uh, research done, has done um, by quantitative research, but they use their questionnaire from their psychology or from the medical area. So the, the, the target population is uh -huh. different. Okay. And then, so I, I thought, okay, I should uh, develop a you know, questionnaire to measure yeah. uh, religious faith in sports. So mm. at the moment, I'm developing a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after that, uh, probably because I, I create the model, uh, mm. once I uh, develop this questionnaire, maybe mm. I can so people, the researchers can test my model using the questionnaire because there mm -hmm. is no questionnaire. So, you know, uh, even though we want to test the model, we can't. Okay. So I, maybe I would like to suggest uh, um, at the end here because um, yes, your um, your diagram here, right, is uh, the floor is clear how you, you do the research. Mm -hmm. But um, what is the expected outcome? You know, like what's the result? Okay, um, so once we know, uh, because I, I study psychology, so yeah. when you, uh, you want to improve your, for example, sports performance, so mm. many psychological factors can influence the performance. Mm. So this questionnaire is multidimensional uh, questionnaire, so mm. we can use the questionnaire to see which psychological factors can uh, predict or more influenced on the sports performance. So mm -hmm. once we know, for example, uh, coping strategy. So if yeah. we know the, this factor, then we can design the intervention program, focus on the uh, coping strategy to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to enhance the sports performance. That All is right. my, All right. my last. <laughs> Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, so, because the research itself, right, uh, is quite interesting. Um, but maybe, um, you know, like to improve further in the future, um, because the reason why uh, when I ask uh, all of you to do uh, one abstract um, diagram, abstract diagram, is that, okay, how many of you have already um, applied for internal grants like IIRG? Actually, I got a FRGS last year. Okay. So right. developing questionnaire and and also another uh, research is mm. called I can use the FRGS uh, grant okay. and also I have uh, also faculty grant. But that that grant I will use uh, of course religion and physical activities. But the the participants are different. This one yeah. is for athletes. Mm. That the yeah. uh, that research is for the general population. Okay, all right. Thank you, Dr. No. Uh, thank you for sharing with us uh, your research projects. Um, yeah, okay. The reason why when I talk about like how many of you, I think Dr. Aga has uh, raised your hand. Um, if you apply for IIRG internal grant, I'm not sure about faculty grants, but um, for IIRG, I, I know that you are asked to um, 
to prepare an abstract diagram. Correct? Am I right, Dr. Aga? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, I'm using laptop now actually. Okay. It's just that there are some echo at the back, uh, but it's okay. Because my, uh, sorry, I off the wall, I mean the mic for my desktop. Okay, all right. It's working and then not working, so it's crazy. <laughs> okay, no worries. Yes, so Dr. Aga, you mentioned that uh, you, you raised hand that you have applied for IIRG, right? Yeah, I have applied for both IIRG and also FRG. Okay, so uh, you requested to present that uh, one patch of uh, well, the diagram <laughs> abstract? No, I just raised hand because uh, you asked anyone actually applied for IIRG, but do you, uh -huh. you want me to share like the abstract? Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, okay, we have okay, we can have one more uh, um one more <laughs> participant sharing. But uh, because I, I think IRRG um you are requested, uh, it's actually one of the um one of your documents, supplementary document, if I'm not mistaken. Uh yes, basically mm. we need to have graphical abstract for every yes. sub program and also the main program. So exactly, exactly. Uh, now you, you know you, have, yes. you need a small graphical abstract. Now you know why why I asked you to do, right? Um, yeah. Okay, all, everything that I, I do here, are, um, the two um, two days with all of you, um, it won't be a waste because you are actually using it to do your research, uh, to apply for the funds and so forth. Okay, uh, Dr. Aga, please. Uh, Carry on. Can I'm not very screen? familiar with Microsoft Teams. Uh, which okay, hold on. Yeah. Um, if you should I click to share my screen? Um, if you just move your cursor, you will have like a bar at the bottom. You know, like the video, the microphone. Yeah. You see that? And then there is an arrow, open share try. You can oh, click on the open. arrow. Yes. So ah, open okay. share try and then uh, it will come out your desktop or so forth. You can click on the open share tray uh, for the desktop and then you click whatever we will see all your desktops. Okay, uh, hold okay. on. Uh, open share desktop window. Um, am I sharing now? Mm, yep, yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So, okay. Great. Oh, this is very colorful as well. Uh, this is actually my FRG project. I mean, the uh -huh. faculty project instead of IRG. Well, IRG okay. is like very um, more layers, you know, so <laughs> it's very complicated. So this one is my FRG project. And this is my sub program. We mm -hmm. are looking at uh, what we have from the science and then we are trying to bring it to the society. It is more towards social science uh, mm. project. So, okay, what my, my team will do will be on the scientific context where mm -hmm. uh, we try to develop the observer, the, the barable, and then we check when the trouble actually cause problem to the soil and also the plant mm. growth. Yeah, and then we see the potential. Sorry. Mm. And for the social context, it's actually a survey mm. where we are trying to understand what people actually know about uh, bio rubber, you know, those okay. uh, recycled, uh, those rubber that can be recycled or maybe being developed by uh, bio hmm. materials. So it may be get even faster. So we want to know whether they are aware or not that we already have this and how they can actually uh, to create a sustainable future, you know, by hmm. just making purchase more of this kind of rubber. So we again look at the potential of okay. uh, this kind of rubber in Malaysia. So this is basically the summary of this sub program. Mm. All right, yeah. nice, nice. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aga. Okay, so, okay, thanks uh, to all three uh, of you, um, Dr. Aga, Dr. No, and also uh, Dr. Idris. Idris. Yeah, Dr. Idris, um, for sharing. Yeah, 
the tenor, the figure is very nice. Actually, your 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 title, um, to me, right, the research project is interesting. It's just that perhaps uh, maybe you can, you know, like after seeing um, the, your peers, um, other colleagues, how they they do like uh, the graphical diagram. I guess uh, the tenor, you will have some idea now. You know, like say for example, spiritual, um, because your research is on um, the religion side. You can actually put some diagrams of temple or or anything, you know, to make the whole um, yeah, definitely yes. So to make the the whole things uh, nicer. So why we put like this kind of um, the abstract uh, graphical abstract is actually to help um, to help others who are not um scientifically uh, scientifically well versed or not even like working in um or uh, in your areas uh, same discipline. People like us can be other discipline, or even like your family members, your um, your mom, your parents, your grandparents, and so forth. You, once you look at the picture, right? Um, roughly you can figure out. Oh, now I know. So what you have been done in uh, in the university in the lab? So you are actually doing all this. You see, you you help to do um, you have like in, help to increase the visibility of your project through a graphical abstract. Okay, all right. So I hope everyone is uh, um, get what uh, what the message of uh, the assignment is. Any question before we proceed? Anything you would like to ask? Everyone okay? You can actually type here in the message if uh yeah just can type in the message if you are very shy to um to switch on your microphone no worries we are all friends yes <laughs> yes nothing yep okay everything is okay yeah all right okay so um because just now we have a long hold on let me share the flu slide we have a long um, activity moment, like around 30 minutes, yes. Uh, yes, 30 minutes, including um, the presentation and also explanation. But um, I hope that um, you have gained something from the graphical abstract exercise. Okay, now we are going to move to the next topic, okay? Building your online presence. Remember just now when I asked the question on Slido, why increase visibility? and um, one of the things that uh, will help when you increase the visibility is your reputation. Okay, your reputation in order for you to stand out. So um, you have a voice in, uh, in your field. All right. So building your online presence is our next topic. Okay. Researcher profile. So what is researcher profile? Researcher profile means that, say for example, I'm using myself as a... Um, as uh, what I should call an uh, example. So um, my background, I, I have a PhD uh, in applied statistics in health sciences, but what I'm doing now full-time as a uh, staff, uh, staff of UM, a research manager and also uh, industry liaison of UM. So what is my profile, my research profile? That the tag of uh, like what um, my background, applied statistics in health science is actually my research, what I've done. Um, um, the profile of my research, but my role as an industry liaison is like my profile is to engage with academia and industry to help to bridge the gaps, to do negotiation, to facilitate all the um, all the discussion, and to form a strategic partnerships between the university and also um, the external stakeholders. That will be my work profile, the um, my task, as in uh, my role. Okay, industry uh, liaison role profile. So what is a researcher's uh, profile? Why is it important? It allows you and your research to be more discoverable. And it will create and manage a publication list. So researcher profile can encompass a, uh, quite a number of things. Later, we will go into one by one. And it avoids misidentification. So what this uh, misidentification is all about? And I'm sure you have already come across, right? Say, for example, when we submit to a journal, 
sometimes we just use our initial and uh, bearing in mind like in the in the world uh, even in the uh, academia world how many of us are actually sharing the same name okay even like my own initial uh, i'll put like bong and then yb uh, but if you google right there will be a lot of like bong yb out there they're sharing the initial the same initial like mine so how am i going to stand out from this uh, all this um, group of researchers it is actually through your own uh, profile okay create opportunities to be cited and finally found uh, find and be found by your potential collaborators so when you are standing out right you stand out in the area people will identify you and will start con uh, contacting you because you are somebody in the field okay find and be found so right what is the tips of um, building up your researcher profile? So you make yourself memorable uh, with a tagline, headline, biography. Okay, in your UM expert, have you have all of you updated your um, in your UM expert the CV? There is a section for biography, a very short biography, or even in your LinkedIn, have you updated the biography? Anyone? Yes, okay, Dr. Yap, you have updated. Dr. Yap is from, from Faculty of Linguistics. All right, uh, Dr. Yap, um, do you have your mic with you? Yes, yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Boon, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, whether I can, yeah, I don't know whether my my voice uh, still here can. Okay, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I uh, I think uh, Doctor Bon, what is the question you want to ask? Yes, uh, Doctor Boon, uh, can you hear me? Just now, what you uh, what is the question you want to ask? Uh, yeah, can you hold on for a while? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're having problem with the. Uh, yeah, the yeah, the I think so. Yeah, that's why. Right, yeah, I understand. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's my problem. I thought I I was like, why I can't hear everybody? So it's actually my problem. My internet just got disconnected. But now I'm back. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, uh, Dr. Yap. Just now um, we're asking about like, you have updated, hold on, let me share my screen. You have updated in your um, biography, right? Yes, yes. But that's all, yeah. Don't know whether it's the, uh, yeah, it's the, the biography can make a very good, uh, you know, uh, people. Would you like to? Would you like to share uh, your bi biography is in your UM expert? Yes. Uh, okay, you, mean, you asked me to to share or... Actually, I can share from my side if you don't mind. Is that okay? I, I don't mind. Yeah, yes. All right. Okay. Um, then, um, hold on. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, that's a yep. So, in your UM expert... Okay, we are on, hold on. We are actually, we want to view your biography. Okay. Wow, that is quite, quite long. All right. So you are, you joined academic life as a senior lecturer in uh, 2016 and program coordinator. All right. Completed. This is your background. Then um, 
your areas. So um, what your interest, main research interests, okay, in uh, global Chinese in general, teaching Chinese and um, okay, methodology, Chinese research methodology and so forth. Sorry, okay, I, great. Don't, I don't think we're seeing the screen. Did you meant to share? I wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. Hi, sorry, sorry. I thought I was like uh, sharing already. No worries. Okay. All right. Uh, now you can see, right? Okay. Sorry. Okay, this is uh, Dr. Yap's um, biography. So we are in the uh, in the topic of um, you know like uh, preparing your own biography. So what I mentioned just now, Dr. Yap uh, introduced herself as a uh, she joined academic life as a senior lecturer in two thousand sixteen. And she also mentioned her background and, and furthermore, her main research interests are what is it? Okay, and um, welcome proposal for what kind of proposal and uh, so forth. Right, I think this is a very good um, good biography, I would say. And uh, Dr. Yap put a very nice photo as well. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, okay, great. Uh, we will go back to our slide then. Okay, so using example of Dr. Yap earlier, um, memorable with good headline, tagline, biography. Yes, uh, she has managed a very nice uh, biography and have the right photo. So Dr. Yap, make sure you use that photo, right, in your LinkedIn, in professional, I mean professionally, I'm not talking about like social media, like Facebook and so forth, but uh, professionally, uh, use your, um, uh, what should I, uh, the, what is that? The the uh, photo, the same photo, uh, maybe in your research gate as well, or academia. Wherever you can put, you can use the same. So, um, what is the things that we want? It's actually your achievement, okay? The facts of um, your awards, the services, or what your quality as a researcher, as a networker, okay? Yeah. Then, um, um, avoid claim or any claim that cannot be identif uh, identif uh, independently identified. So what, mean, what it means here is that um, don't make uh, over claim, okay? Don't boss yourself. What we don't want is that you, uh, we don't want you to like uh, over boosting yourself, but just uh, spell out the facts, okay? What, what you do, what, is, uh, what have you done, what is your area and so forth. Okay, so the unique selling point. So like Dr. Yap here, now even after I close um, Dr. Yap's uh, UM expert, I can still remember, okay, Dr. Yap, is, her main research area is to do with Chinese study. You see, that's the unique selling point. That Chinese study, because, it's, it, because it was like repeated like so many times, somehow it caught my attention. So that is how people remember you. So if let's say, for example, if I have a... Um, I want to look for a collaborator who is like um, in, in Chinese study research, I will come to Dr. Yap first. So you see how, how through this kind of uh, researcher profile, you are able to stand out, right? Yes, Dr. Amy, sorry, I just um, see your uh, message here. Okay, uh, great idea, thank you. <laughs> but I think most of you here, uh, all of you already know this is a fact, it's just that um, sometimes, right, it got passed um, from our mind because of our busyness in uh, faculty, in our research, in teaching, in, you know, student supervision. And sometimes we didn't think about, like, small things like this actually helps you in the long run. Okay? So now, we have another assignment, another activity. But this one is very simple, okay? Just prepare a short biography of yourself, introduction about yourself. So this is like, um, you know, like um, when you are in primary school or yeah, primary school, you are asked to write an essay about myself. Okay, so this is a very short biography, but all of you now are PhD holder, all of you now are doctors. Or even like, uh, I think I have like associate prof as well. I think, I'm not sure whether I have professor joining the class today. But you will be able to write better than that, right? Okay, so prepare a short biography. 
And all these kind of uh, assignment and activities, right? I won't be, I won't make it too long. So we will just keep it short, fit and short. Ten minutes, ten minutes for your short biography. And I will just pick anyone, um, you know, to just introduce yourself through um, this uh, researcher profile. Okay, so our aim is researcher profile. So what we want to hear is. Okay, uh, what's your research areas and what is the research uh, research projects that you will be interested in? So that, um, you know, who knows uh, in this group, in this class itself, you might have your potential collaborator in research. You never know, right? Okay, so because we all of us are uh, doing interdisciplinary uh, research and so forth. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Amy, I'll see you later. Um, I'll be here also tomorrow morning. Okay. All right, so 10 minutes for your short biography and the clock starts now. Okay, all right. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. All right. Um, okay, I just want to pick like um, just one, one um, person to share. So, um, Dr. Chong. Dr. Chong Pan Pan, you're here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Dr. Chong. Ah, yeah. So I, I know that you have uploaded um, in your UM Expert a very nice biography. So uh, would you mind to share uh, in very short, like three sentences about yourself or five sentences, uh, yeah, just verbally? So, sorry, actually, I'm now in a shared room, it's not in the private room. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For me to speak. Sorry. All right, all right. Okay, no worries. Uh, it's okay, Dr. Chong. Um, maybe I will check another person. Let me see. Um, Karen, Karen, are you here? Karen? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, Karen. Okay, so Karen, uh, would you like to share your short biography of yourself? Um, yes, so on, I just give me a second. I copy the file and I share it. Should yeah. I do that? Yeah, you can. You copy. can actually verbally. Uh, you don't have to copy. Also, can just verbally because it's a very short biography. So um, you can just um, really you know introduce yourself. Oh, okay. Can <laughs> uh, okay. uh, verbally okay. Uh, so I. Okay, my name is Dr. Karen Ng Li Ping. is currently a senior research officer at the Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Center, Faculty of Dentistry, UM. She obtained her first degree uh, in Bachelor of Science uh, from UPM in 2005 and her master's degree uh, uh, in Dental Science from UM in 2008. And um, in 2014, she uh, was awarded the Hadia Latin Fiscal One from the Ministry of uh, education and uh, decidedly from UM to pursue her PhD in uh, oral oncology at Queen Mary University of London in UK. And um, so Dr. Karen joined UM in 2006 as a research assistant and I was appointed as a research officer in 2008 and later on to senior research officer post until which she serves until today. So her research interest covers fundamental and translational research in the field of uh, cancer studies, including cancer cell biology, cancer biomarkers discovery, and cellular senescence. Um, Dr. Karen's uh, uh, active participation and commitment in research is highly reflected by having um, 15 ISI publication with a H index 7 and obtained several grants, uh, FRGS, UMRG, IRG, uh, and HIR grants, um, where she is the co-researcher. She has presented her research at numerous uh, national and international conferences and received a number of awards in recognition of her research contribution to the university. Mm. For her outstanding work, she has been appointed as an affiliate in the Young Research uh, Young Scientist Network, um, Academy of Science Malaysia at YSNASM. She's also an active member of the Biochemical Society UK. As a passionate mm. scientist, she involves herself in STEM science outreach related activities among the secondary uh, school children, uh, students. She's currently mentoring several postgraduate students and active, actively collaborating with international institutes. Okay, 
Thank you very much, Karen. It's a very comprehensive uh, details of yourself. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, so yes, uh, I guess uh, there is not a, a problem for all of you here um, to prepare a short biography because I noticed that all of you have already covered what is essential, like your background and then your research area and um, you know, like your publication, um, what your um, interest is in and even like some, some of you even mentioned about awards, recognition, um, some um, uh, recognizable uh, society or even like uh, association. So yes, good work. Um, perhaps in the future, I hope to have like, you know, maybe some of you winning some award, uh, Medica uh, Prize Award or even like uh, Young Scientist Award. Yeah, you can even like add in one or two awards in your short biography, which you can actually upload it in your um, UM Expert in your LinkedIn. You know, a very short, precise way to introduce yourself. Okay, right. So we move on uh, about researcher ID. Okay, so like what I mentioned, this is already the this is a theoretical part. Researcher ID gives uh, the disambiguation of a good name, uh, enhanced discoverability, and ensuring the credit is where the credit is due to. Okay, but the thing is, um, I hope all of you are aware that Researcher ID, previously it was under the Web of Science, uh, Thomson Reuters Web of Science. So Researcher ID is no longer, um, no, like, no longer an independent, it's already being, um, how should I put it? It's like under the pablons, okay? So this happens in 2019, um, all existing Researcher ID accounts it has, has been directed, redirected to your Pablon's uh, profile. So something good about Pablon is that this Pablon, um, you can actually Google Pablon uh, or even like you click on your, I'm not sure if you can see in your UM expert, but you try to explore. So it shows more of your research impact because Pablon, right, all your publication, okay, um, is being, can be easily imported from Web of Science, from ORCID, so your end not and mainly, okay, you can just import it to uh, public, your publication and you can actually monitor your citation metrics, how many people actually cite your papers and you can monitor like your citation growing, okay, how many people view and so forth. Um, there is also this uh, feature called the verified peer review and journal editing history. If, say for example, you are being invited as a journal to review some of the paper from other, you know, like uh, to help to review. So Pablon actually recognize your, your work, your role as a reviewer. And this reviewer will add into your, you, you'll build your research impact. Okay. And, um, okay, downloadable record. Right. Hmm. Okay, so um, I will go very fast on the theoretical side, the theory side. ORCID is an uh, open researcher and contributor ID. So this is not something new, it's quite old already. Um, so it's a registry of unique identifiers uh, for researchers and scholars. That is open, it is non-profit, uh, it's free. You can just register it, okay? And uh, transparent and community-based. So what is this ORCID? It's like your credit card. There is like 16 numbers of ORCID. So it connects a different ID system through an open and persistent identifier. And some of it, right, uh, sometimes uh, the publisher. Um, I know more and more publisher has been using ORCID ID as, you know, like your identifier. So say, for example, if you submit to uh, Elsevier or um, what else, I think Scholar One, um, they are also using ORCID. So you have, all you have to do is just to key in your 16 digit uh, ORCID ID and um, that ID will automatically pull out your uh, identity as a researcher. What is your full name? Where is, uh, where, where is your affiliation? Which university you are affiliated to? How, how many publications that you have? And then what is your areas and your citation and so forth? Everything will be pulled out from the internet. Okay, so um, the OK ID is also a hub for repositories uh, for funders to check, uh, you know, like um, sometimes funders also, they won't ask you to provide every time, uh, won't ask you to provide your um, your details, but they will pull out from the OK ID. Okay, 
professional um, association and identifiers. Okay, so this is the disambiguation part. I have already explained this earlier, so I will just jump. Okay, take a break, no need already. Yeah, <laughs> we have already passed that break time. So next, moving on. Okay, so for researcher profile, everyone, any question from everyone? Can we continue for the impact metrics? Okay, yes. okay, all right. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Okay, so impact metrics. What is impact metrics? Okay, impact metrics, uh, we are now talking about in the metrics um, which measure the impact. So it is a measure, uh, the quantitative impact of either a journal article, a journal, or an, even an individual uh, uh, author. So you, yourself, as a researcher, what is your impact? Um, how can others measure you, your impact as a researcher? So how, what are the metrics being considered? The citation counts. Um, this is actually your journal article. Citation count, how many uh, citations do you receive for the publication? The download counts if the paper is being downloaded, page view and mentions and so forth. Okay, but all these are numbers. So individual author metrics right when i mention like um what is your um your impact as a researcher that will fall for your h index okay that will actually be your um impact to measure you as a researcher your performance as a researcher so all this while uh, we have been talking about like numbers and is a quantitative uh, measure and focus on academic literature and uh sometimes it might be underrepresenting in other types of scholarly work. If, for example, some of you are very active in community engagement activities, and with the current system, sometimes it's not being captured well. Okay, you might have like 120, 130% score in the community engagement, but, um, but we all are aware of that this uh, community engagement, it's a bit difficult to translate into journally uh, publication. Okay, journal publication. So there are some um, limitation here, and you see. Um, so the recent articles, newer journals, and especially for early career researchers, okay, um, may be underrepresented if using this impact metrics. Yeah. Okay. We talk about journal level uh, metrics. So the journal level metrics uh, is actually can be obtained from. Um, you can log in. To master journalist. So the master journalist in your Clarivet Analytics is a uh, way where you can identify like what uh, journal what journal that you should submit to. So which of the journal and what is the impact of the journal? Okay, you can select the journal citation report and browse uh, by category. I won't go into details for this because uh, you can check on um all these uh, there is like videos available. So I will just go very briefly um, how you can select. Okay, say for example, these are the categories, uh, what your fields are, and all the journals and the impact metrics. Okay, what's the author site, the citation, and then you can have the um, what is the score of the um, journal and how the journal actually rank. Okay, so this is the journal impact factor that you can actually check on. So that is where with the journal impact factor, whether your publication or the journal itself, it falls under quarter one or two or three or four. Okay. All right. So you can find your journal, your preferred journal, and check um, the web of science core co um, collection. But in UM, right, for when we talk about ISI, I think most of you are aware already. So ISI only counted the science citation, social science citation, and arts and humanity. If um, some of you is like uh, going for this emerging source citation index, even though it is in Clarivet Analytics, it is not counted uh, as ISI in UM context yet. Okay, we are not sure whether in future uh, it will be slowly go into or not. But at the moment, um, we are still stick to this main three category, right? 
Okay, besides um, the um, count the quantitative um, matrices, there are other matrices which is called the odd matrix. Okay, the odd matrix are complementary to traditional matrix. So it's not an alternative, it's actually complementary. All right. So what are the odd matrix? Um, um, the measurements of odd matrix are this include the download counts, the patch view, the mentions in social media and so forth to measure and represent the amount of attention. So bearing in mind, um, this number, right, say for example, if your mention is very high, 1,000, 2,000, it doesn't mean that you are actually, um, okay, the mention is very high, it's uh, not necessarily a good thing, but it, because sometimes it might be a bad influences as well. But what we can see here in terms, in the context of um, impact, with the mention, you are actually reaching out to more people. More people are actually looking and reading your work. So that is why uh, we, we call the odd matrix the complementary to the traditional matrix. Because the traditional matrix, you can only know uh, people reading your work when they do the citation. Okay, how far you reach. All right, because um, um, today's training, we are talking about uh, the research um, output, the research engagement and impact. So we are looking into like, what, how, how far do you reach? How far your research is actually reaching out? Okay, under the uh, odd matrix, there are some, okay, of course, this one, odd matrix, it has been around for quite some time. We have impact story, we have our plum analytics. Okay, so the impact matrix are uh, tracking how it goes. Okay, if you share the work, like popular press mention, Twitter or Facebook and Pinterest, and then there is also like downloadable uh, PDF and so forth. And uh, engage is actually the event audience number, the exhibition press, and so forth. So this is okay from dissemination. You, your work is being uh, you put up in research get. You put it up in LinkedIn or uh, Academia, and that is actually the dissemination towards uh, building through the impact. If your work is being discussed. Okay, discuss are uh, utilized in a public debate or referenced by journalists and uh, referenced in a parliamentary uh, debate and so forth. Or if your work is cited, even better, because this uh, citation, um, then you have a documentation, you have a record there. Or use, okay, academy as member uh, or government advisory uh, position, they use it. Or they call develop for other things like build on to improve any kinds of performance. So from here, from the dissemination all the way with all these activities, you are slowly building and going towards impact. Okay, so that is like the whole uh, impact metrics tracking. How from um, just a work when you share it, and then uh, when uh, people download it and start engaging with audience and public, people start to discuss about your work, cite about your work, use your work, your findings, and so forth and then taken up by professional organization and uh, utilized in the teaching materials or even like maybe some of your findings actually go for the commercialization you know, develop a prototype from your findings so that is where you know like slowly building towards the impact okay let me know if i'm too fast because i want to cover as much as possible okay so how can you attract attention to your work? So this is just a summary, um, lay summary, write a lay summary and upload available data, images and so forth. Okay, start your own blog if you have the time. Yeah, you can go for it. Um, but if not, it's okay. You can just go do the others like uh, reach out to um, people, like include a link in your work and uh, work with press office. So, okay, so for this one, work with press office, right? Uh, I would like to share like how the structure is uh, in UM, in IPPP now, in um, under the portfolio of research and innovation, uh, DVC of research and innovation. If, say for example, you, your research is very interesting and uh, you think that you would like to, um, is worth to be shared to the public, so we have an office uh, in IPPP, it's actually the Center of Research Services, uh, PPP, 
the PPP uh, with a new head now, Dr. Chai, who is um, heading PPP unit, um, there are new um, structures being implemented. So they work very closely. Um, they start to engage with external parties like uh, Science Media Center and so forth. So there is a possibility that your work, right? Okay, uh, work with them, and maybe your work will be picked up by journalists, uh, picked up by newspaper and so forth. Okay. Of course, uh, the other will be uh, our corporate com uh, office, uh, CCO office. Um, but the CCO office, yes, there is actually officers in charge in um, in the written publication and so forth. Okay, but um, perhaps you can go through the center of research services because it's under the portfolio of research and innovation. All right, and register for a orchid and make your work available via uh, open access. Okay, so up until now, any questions that you would like to ask me for the impact metrics? Anything not clear? Yeah, thank you. Okay, Dr. No, it's okay, yeah? Huh? All good. All right. Okay, so far so good. All right, then we can move on to the next part. All right, just now from the impact metrics tracking, and then uh, we measure, we talk about the impact. Now, where to publish? I guess this is one of the favorite topic uh, for all the researchers. Um, say asking like, where should I send for publication? Okay, so what's the important role? Um, as for integrity wise, uh, because as a researcher, right, we still have to bear our um, the research ethics. So integrity wise, um, please submit to one journal at a time. I don't be too uh, greedy when you try to submit to all because if say, for example, if two or you submit to three publishers and all three of them are set, uh, how are you going to choose them? Yeah. So um, working in like um, the journal, the publisher office, um, because um, the, I mean the editor, the editorial board, they spend time looking to reviewing your submission. So um, it is advisable to be kind uh, to them as well. So that you submit one journal at a time. If it's not, um, it's not accepted, then only go for the rest. So. It is very important to select the journal carefully because um, if not right, the time might lag and you will be missing out your submission period. Okay, because I uh, I understand that all of you have a KPI for publication, so you need to uh, fulfill that KPI within um, this year, right? So be critical and honest when assessing the quality of your work. So do not submit for a too high journal like um. By boasting yourself, but do not submit to a too low, too low level of journal. Okay, be um, be honest with uh, what you feel that your worth is worth of. So find the right journal. Okay, so I talk about like ethics in um scholarly publication. So research ethics. This is something that is like common. Um, and all, all of you, all of us here, um. We should know, we have to know, and uh, we have to bear in mind like all this. We have to be uh, adhere to this um, ethics, okay, the research ethics. And what is the type of plagiarism? Because plagiarism, quite simply, is a theft, okay? So we don't want to be associated with uh, plagiarism and so forth. And what is the consequences, uh, consequences of uh, retraction if? You are, your paper has uh, is being found or is someone actually reported on um, the publication saying that this violates the rules of um, a scholarly publication. So there will be rejection for future manuscript because um, the publisher will keep track and the copyright infringement, uh, mistrust among colleagues, uh, notification of employer, with, of course we don't want that as well, publication ban and reproduction uh, affected. Okay, hold on, I have a call, yeah? Give me a second. I mute myself for a while.
Okay, sorry guys. Um, can you hear me? Everyone can hear me? Yeah. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry um, for an incoming call. Okay, uh, we continue with um, the retraction. Okay, consequences of retraction, like what I mentioned, um, reputation is affected. Okay, in University Malaya, all of you are UM staff, right? Are you aware of this policy of authorship? We have a policy of authorship. So what is this policy all about? Um, it's actually... Um, it's an agreement. Um, the policy talks about agreement from call authors. So which means that um, sometimes, right, when you want to determine like who is the first author, second author, how you are to do the ordering of the authors and based on contribution. So this is a this uh, policy of authorship. It's an agreement from call authors on the authorship, on the recognition of others' uh, contribution, on the acknowledgement of uh, sponsors, and declaration of any conflict of interest. Okay. All right. So um, I will share with you a video of think, check, and submit. Let me know if you can hear. We cannot hear. I think we need to share uh, the, the okay, share the hold on. audio. Cannot hear, is it? No sound. Okay. Yeah, no um, sound. All right. So it's okay if you can't hear. How do I get unshare? All right. Mm -hmm. Go to the side. Uh, go to Teams first. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think when you share screen uh, on the top left hand uh, in the share option, there should be a share audio from computer or something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. We are checking now. Share audio. Share device. It's supposed to be here, including computer sound. Or maybe you can use this one to share. Okay. Um, sorry, technical problem. Or another way is um, I will just because I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, the link. You have the link. Then just uh, put on here. Then I'll click on it. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. For the link, so I have to check. <laughs> Please, my computer there. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, right, everyone. Um, I just uh, put in the link. Okay. Umu will help me to play. Um, hold on, yeah. Okay. Hold on for a while. I'll play it from here. Okay. You've done your research and are ready to publish. Sharing your results with the world is key to the progress of your discipline and to your career. 
Publishing your work with an untrustworthy journal has the potential to damage your career. With the number of journals growing at around 3.5% annually, and almost a thousand new journals launching in 2014 alone, how can you choose a trusted journal for your research? Think, check, submit. Before you decide, step one, think. Do I trust this journal with my research? Do I need more information before I can decide that this is a trusted journal? Step two, check. Does the journal publish research that you would read yourself? Can you tell which organization publishes the journal? Can you contact them easily if you need to? Does the journal have editorial policies in place? And do they conduct appropriate peer review? Does it charge publication fees? And are they clear about how much they cost? Do you know the names or reputations of any of the editorial board members? Are articles in the journal indexed in any of the services that you use? Step three, if you can answer yes to most of these questions, then submit. By following these three steps, you can identify which journals will reliably publish your work and make an impact in your field. When you finish your next article, remember to think, check, then submit. Check the website for more tips Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, wait. Okay, done. All right. Now let me share my screen. Okay, so. I hope everyone is clear um, because I try to uh, integrate um, some videos. So think, check and submit is very easy. It's a traffic light. So first, before you submit to any journal, you think first like what uh, the video mentioned just now. Uh, what are the questions that you like? Um, you answer to, you know, you ask the question to yourself before you submit to any journal. All right. Okay, let me go to... Hey, hold on. Uh, mm, all right. So, uh, where to publish? And there is actually um, nowadays uh, there are a lot of uh, websites where you can select the journal that suits your research by some tools. Okay. So, for example, uh, Springer, Elsevier, and EndNote. This is one of the example of uh, EndNote manuscript matcher. So, if you sign in to your EndNote, you you go to your EndNote. Okay, there is a function, a tab called the match. What you have to do is just enter your manuscript, uh, draft manuscript title and an abstract. And um, the machine, I mean the, um, the site itself, will automatically um, try to search and list down some of the potential possible journals. So of course, these journals, right, you have to check one by one whether the scope is suitable for um, your paper or not. Okay, another one is uh, Elsevier Journal Finder. It's also similar. So like Elsevier uh, Journal Finder, you can just Google and it will bring you to the site. Okay, similarly, put in your title and also the abstract. And Springer also offer the journal suggester. Okay, so I'm not sure if you have a manuscript with you at the moment. If you have, uh, we can do this activity. But if not, it's okay uh, because we can continue with other things. So perhaps after um, today's class, uh, you can have like you can try on uh, the three um, tools that I mentioned: the end not uh, matcher and the uh, um, journal finder of uh, Elsevier journal finder, Springer journal suggester. So these three tools um, try to have like a manuscript draft or anything, or even some if you want to test whether. How good is the um, the tools? Because they are actually using some codings and programming. Um, find a suitable journal through using this tool. Uh, these uh, tools, the journal finders. Okay, all right. So get found. So for, for basically for today, right? Um, I will continue another. Let me see. 
Actually, one more topic. So half an hour. Yeah, just in time. Before uh, we call it an end for today, and then uh, we will continue tomorrow. So get found. When I mention about get found, okay, it's a way of your visibility um, measure, the strategy. How you want to be found. Okay, so this is a term called academic search engine optimization. So imagine, right? Imagine if I have a product. Then think about your paper, uh, your publication is a product that you want to sell it. Okay, you have a paper published in um in nature. So this okay, okay, maybe nature is not a very good um good example. Um perhaps let's just use um search publication. You have published a paper in search. How are you going to make sure that uh, other people or uh, your peers from other countries will be able to find the paper and cite your paper? If uh, say um, sometimes right there is the journal. Um, if you Google, it, it's not like very easily search and so forth. So similarly, um, if we use um, if imagine if the paper right is a product. So this product if you park it at different shops. You put it in Aeon, you put it in um, Jasco, Giant, Parkson, everywhere. So the more you put it, okay, the more it is easier to be able to find the product. Okay, so um, if you look at your paper, what, what it translated into the meaning is that um, if you imagine your paper, you put it in... Um, Research gap, you put it up in your UM expert, you put it in the repository of other repository, SSRA, you put it in academia, or uh, if there is other things that are, you know, there's a lot out there, then the chances of your paper being searched is higher. Okay, so what if all this diagram, the search engine optimization means that when you maximize the discoverability, so um, in it automatically you increase the access okay people will be easy uh, it is easier for people to access to your publication and it goes to so it goes down to increase the download okay so um since your paper is very easy to access and you have the pdf uh, version it's a full paper so I, I will be able to download your paper and subsequently increase citation because once i read it and i find hey wait this Part of it, it fits what I want to explain for my work. So I will cite the paper. Okay, increase citation. And subsequently, okay, finally, it will increase the impact. Okay. So what all, um, academic search engine optimization means is that the process of transforming your research paper into one which is easily indexed and categorized uh, by the search engines. So um, it will have more advantageous uh, position to increase visibility and the citation. And for this uh, search engine optimization, okay, for this part, okay, how you need, what, what is the things that, what is the strategies, what are the things that you need to do in order to help your article to appear at the top of the list, okay, in the search engine, which means that uh, what you should do for your paper so that when I type in Google, in Bing, in um, anything, in um, Mozilla, Firefox, in Edge, it will appear one of the top or even like in the first page. Okay, so what is the trick here? You use keywords in the title and abstract. Say for example, if um, my paper is about um, marine oxidification, so if my title already I have mentioned, or maybe okay, we put in a more general um general term, um marine conservation. Okay, marine conservation is about like coral reefs. Okay, maybe we we'll use coral reefs as an example. Okay, my title of the paper, I have coral reefs of blah 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 and editing, right? Put in title. Use that coral reefs as a keyword in the extract as well. And then the headings, uh, use the headings with keywords. Okay, your caption, you mentioned about the coral reefs and then link to your article. So increase the usage of keywords will help to, um, you know, like um, help in maximize your uh, search engine optimization. Okay, 
So uh, before we go for the last topic, so for the search engine optimization, is the theoretical part clear enough? Everyone okay? Any question do you want to ask? Yes, okay, all right. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Okay, then we will move on to the last topic of today. I guess all of you are quite, um, you are like, your mind is also quite heavy already uh, for all the theory and so forth. Okay, the last part of today, uh, after the search engine optimization is open access. So what is open access? I will encourage you to go as open as you can. Okay, so now how to make your research an open access? Okay, so okay, before that, what it meant by open access also open access is free to read on the internet free to download copy distribute and sf etc if credit is given to the authors which means that you are freely um you know like you can download the full text all right so green open access is like self archiving your work in the open access uh, repository and uh, go while they publish you you have to pay uh, for some open access journal and then you will publish so how to make your research upon access and for free and legal? Okay, the, the keyword here is legal. We want you to go as open as possible, but legally. Okay, so first of all, do you know any free open access journal? Okay, just now we talk about like, think, um, uh, wait, what is it? Um, just now for, for the journal submission, okay, we have that video. We have the video of uh, think, check, and then submit, right? So now, when we talk about, um, once you have already go through, you check through the journal, and then when you want to submit, okay, you check also the journal, whether it is open, is a free open access journal. If it is, if it is a free open access journal, then yeah, go for it. So there might be some charges, so these are the um, goal open access route where you have to pay a fee and then your paper will be um, online. Um, once it's, it get published, it will be available online uh, freely for anyone. Okay, for anyone to um, to use it, to cite it or to re refer to it. So that is why there is a certain charges for you to submit for the publisher to maintain. And the good news is, um, for all of you here, in um, there, when if let's say your grant, whatever grant that you receive, uh, be it like uh, internal grant or FRGS external grants, if there is a portion, there is some money in the grant, you can use that for the patch charge fund. Okay, the patch charge fund is actually for this open access payment. All right, if the uh, the journal that you select has um is not. It's not uh, a free open access journal. Then that is why I ask whether you have um, some um, funding for open access. Okay, then if it is, so go for it, pay for that. And if not, well, too bad. You can well, you have to check whether you can publish it post print. If you still can publish it post print, you better publish it. But if not, can you publish it even pre print? So the pre print is. Um, the, the paper itself, the manuscript has not been reviewed. So preprint, um, you know, the uh, credit of like citing a preprint is not as, as high. It's usually people won't cite the preprint, but they will cite the published version. Okay, so if all this route you still can't get, okay, all this question, then opt for another, another journal. It's not worth uh, investing in the set journal already. Okay, there are a lot of journals out there. Um, so there is um, from from UK. I think um, this was quite all uh, quite a few years ago. 
Okay, a university actually using, um, they've developed the Sherpa Romeo for the archiving permission. What they do is they accumulate all the journals and then go through um, the, all the rules and regulations, whether you can, the publisher copyright transfer agreement. So whether you can publish it, um, they will have like color coding. A green one is that you can archive it a preprint prior to any uh, pre peer review. So this preprint is not re being reviewed yet, and also a post print. So different color indicates like different things. Like blue one will have like archive or post print, and then after peer review, and then yellow is um, may archive in preprint and so forth. Okay. So you can check on Sherpa Romeo, click on the link, uh, Sherpa Romeo, and then you can check on, type in the journal, the name of your journal, whatever journal that you want to uh, submit. And you, some of the, okay, perhaps like maybe some of the journal, right? If um, it's not being here, if you can't search it on the Sherpa Romeo, then you have to go through and read through um, the journal specification, um, what it says about the publisher copyright. Okay, so um, most of the time, um, even though if you have already received the acceptance acknowledgement from the publisher, the publisher will tell you that this uh, article is still being embargo until they release it. So you can't share it when it's in the embargo period. Okay. All right. Okay, for the last um, uh, last half an hour, I would like to share with you for the open access, um, open science platform. Um, we, our, I would like to say, um, Malaysia, we are very lucky that um, the government, the ministry acknowledge how important it is uh, for this um, open access. Okay, so we have an open science platform, the Malaysia Open Science Platform, MOSP. And um, this was um, launched in 2019. And even better for all of us is that uh, for MOSP, right, um, is actually being the pilot initiative is, uh, we are one of the pilot initiative. UM is one of it. Okay, of course, with other research university, UPM, USM, UKM, and UTM. So what this uh, open science platform concept is all about is a knowledge uh, open science knowledge platform where the research dis uh, discovery platform okay connects with the collaboration platform. So this collaboration platform is the iConnect. Um, iConnect I will share with you tomorrow. Okay, we have like session on uh, parts of it about what what is iConnect. I will introduce you to you what iConnect is about. But today uh, we are talking about like open science platform the MOSP. So the open science platform, uh, Malaysia open science platform, focus on the national policy and guideline, capacity building and awareness, and infrastructure. So what is the international guiding principles behind this open science? Okay. So internationally, uh, everyone they, they believe that we all believe that the researchers believe that a fair, a fair system, the principle of uh, open science, which is findable where your article is very easy to find, accessible, where you can download, you can uh, copy, you can uh, cite and so forth, interoperable, uh, interoperable, and finally is uh, reusable. Okay, so uh, it's a fair concept. Right. And the purpose of um, Malaysian Open Science Platform is to map Malaysia research data as a valuable national asset by developing a trusted platform that enables the accessibility and sharing of research data to align with the national priorities and international best practices. Which means that now uh, with this open science platform, everyone, uh, all the Malaysian researchers, you can share your research data so that uh, some of the projects, right, whatever you want to use, you don't have to repeat the same project. Then you can use like maybe uh, you have some researchers or peers uh, from UPM or UKM has done some part, some initial um, initial work on the things that you want to look into. So with that existing data, you don't have to waste your resources to redo the preliminary work, but you can 
um, use those uh, research data and um, you know that you save your funding for uh, further development of your project. So that is one of the things. The rationale behind open science is that it's a responsible science. So um, open scientific inquiry promotes the research quality and integrity through uh, reproducibility, which are like what I mentioned. Okay, so the data can be uh, transparent, accountability for verification and avoid fraud. Okay, another thing is the democratize uh, science uh, because all the uh, research is publicly funded. Uh, we are accountable to the society and increase the return on public investment in scientific research. So we promote the equitable use of data and enable citizen science uh, participation. Okay, research management, um, how the maximization of the data utility, minimize costs, like what I mentioned, so unnecessary duplication of uh, research and better planning in research management and funding. And finally, scientific progression. So this is like finding a solution to global and also local challenges and fostering collaboration and research beyond discipli uh, disciplinary boundary. Okay. So, what are the benefits of uh, Open Science Platform, the Malaysian Open Science uh, Platform? Okay, of course, enhance the collaboration affordability, uh, affording opportunities, increase visibility, uh, our main um, aim for uh, the, this uh, today and tomorrow. So Open Science Platform helps to increase the research visibility and discoverability. And the taxpayers get value for money. This is the ROI, return on investment because all taxpayers are uh, we pay our uh, taxes and these tax are being used as a part of like a funding for the researchers to conduct research compliance with uh, institutional and funder mandates where um we are we are asked to share the data uh, not just the publication but the research data itself okay evidence based uh, policy decision and then wider and bigger potential audience including the public Okay, greater scientific impact, right? The metrics are uh, increase the um, scientific impact. And finally, practitioners can apply the research findings directly, immediately. Okay, so. The focus area for Malaysian Open Science Platform, just now I already mentioned the, the few focus area, the national guideline, the national policy, Okay, so the governance, uh, the standards of uh, FAIR, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and also re uh, reusability. And then incentive uh, for openness. Okay, then uh, management, data management plan, capacity and capability of data management, and then awareness and capac uh, capacity building, where uh, your user, the manager, the data scientist, uh, new concept sensitivity about data and mindset, and finally, infrastructure, which is the technology and platform to support uh, this open science, um, Malaysia Open Science Platform. So, uh, by the way, Malaysia Open Science Platform is um, being carried under Academy of Sciences Malaysia. Okay. And um, the chair for this MOSP, I think, no, I'm not sure, I think it should be still um, chaired by Prof. Nosada, our Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation. Okay. So, that will be end of day one for the training. Any questions would you like to ask? Any question, any things that you need me to clarify? We have roughly like uh, 15 minutes before 12 p.m. Yes, Dr. Yap. My site, is it? Um, my site, if I'm not mistaken, my site is um, on the journal citation part. Um, yeah, let me think. Uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, my site is um, managing the local journal. Um, so what they are looking is like to push, to, to help the local journals 
um, to reach like the Scopus and then push to um, I, uh, web, uh, ISI index and so forth. But what, uh, let me check for a while. Sorry, I um I have not done the my site um my site um uh, background check, but my site is um is actually under MCC, yeah. Uh, so it's a uh, maintaining the citation, the citation system. Uh, so it's a Malaysian uh, citation index. Do we recognize? What 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 it mean? You what do you mean by uh, recognize it? Or maybe the thing up if you want to unmute yourself. Ah uh, yes, uh, Doctor Boon. Yes. Uh, yes. I yeah, uh, I just want to ask and make sure this kind of the my site. So uh -huh. those, uh, those, uh, let's say uh, those uh, uh, researchers, uh, journals, uh -huh. uh, the citation, no, is uh, is uh, accepted like uh, in my site. So is that uh, our UM recognized that as a Scopus or ISI, something like the status for the journal. Oh, okay. You mean uh, the status of the journal. So if the journal is a uh, local, I mean like UM has this journal and this journal is accepted under my site, right? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, okay. We'll go back to this uh, slide here. Mm, my site, uh, like what I mentioned, is actually a Malaysian citation index. Um, okay. So this slide. In terms of uh, for KPI purpose, uh, for KPI UM's uh, KPI purpose, it still uh, counted the ISI and also uh, Scopus. Sorry, I think uh, Scopus is not mentioned here. Yeah, ISI and uh, Scopus. So my site, even though it's a Malaysian Citation Index, um, in terms of um, KPI calculation, I, do, I don't think it's still accepted yet. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yes. All right. But uh, my site, right? Because my site also has like other journal. Um but yeah, because the my site is um considered like Malaysian level, so uh what the university the management would push for is actually uh glowing going global. All right. Any other question? Okay, thank you, Fazril. I oh, didn't know about this initiative on uh, MOSP. Yes. So uh, now you know. Now we know. Okay, we have this uh, Malaysia Open Science Platform. And yes, uh, Malaysia Open Science Platform, right? Because it's actually part of. Uh, we are part of it. So um, so it is all about the open access. Okay. I will share. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wong. Any other questions? Okay. Um, before I end uh, for today's uh, session, um, for tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, what you will be learning, uh, what, what the training will be all about. So tomorrow, uh, I will cover on... Um, the more, I mean like, okay, today is actually more on the theoretical side, okay, about like the research output or you have, you go through uh, what are the research, um, like how your researcher ID and then what is the uh, open access and get found all those uh, search engine optimization, uh, impact matrices, and then um, where to publish. Uh, that's basically more on the theoretical part. So for tomorrow, um, we will only cover like two main topics, but it's huge, huge topic. One on communicating research, and the second is actually research impact, uh, building impact. All right. So, of all of you, I can see all. Uh, oh, I don't know. Also, sorry. There's one more thing that I will also cover tomorrow is actually partnerships uh, with uh, stakeholders. So I'll be sharing like um, how you can work with uh, UMIs. Come to our office and how we will assist you 
in terms of strategic partnerships. What is stakeholder? How to uh, man, uh, manage uh, stakeholders' expectation and so forth. Okay. I hope to see all of you tomorrow. And um, sorry if there is any uh, thing uh, that uh, if I'm talking too fast, just let me know. I will improve uh, and uh, correct myself. Okay, I will stop sharing. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, for the past uh, three hours. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Dr. Nadia. Dr. Nadia pun join ke? Sorry, uh, Dr. Nadia is like associate professor. Da. Thank you, Dr. Kaur. Um, hi, Dr. Bong. So, yeah. the session ends already? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll meet you back tomorrow, uh, the same time, uh, nine a.m. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So we'll provide you the feedback form uh, of edX behalf tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. So after the sessions end, you can fill up the feedback form. All, All right. right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So I'll see you tomorrow, and we will continue with our uh, interesting uh, topic. Okay. Goodbye, and have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Bong. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Dr. Bong. Thank you.